You're listening to a Rock Candy podcast. Hi, I'm Peter Santoscano, and this is Bubble and Squeak, a podcast with uncanny sounds, funny interludes, and stories most weird, many true. Okay, here's episode 10. Our show today comes in three parts. Part one, a true story about getting regayed. It's entitled, Do You Need Lube to Go With That? Part two, a quick visit to the Homo Nomo halfway house. It was 17 years ago this month I first premiered this ex-gay expose. Through eight characters in 90 minutes, I comically critiqued America's most notorious conversion therapy program. And part three, a sound slice. Do you need lube to go with that? A true story. Back in episode six, Ass Whisperers, I shared an actual prank phone call I made. It was to Dan Savage of the Savage Love podcast. I made the call in character. Hello, I'm a 52-year-old gay man. My name is Marvin. I called before, but you've ignored me. I, I feel confident in, in a lot of ways about who I am, but then I get these, you know, suspicions that maybe I'm still not accepting that I am, and that's going to influence the relationships that I have and all of that. Anyway, I've been thinking lately that maybe I should try a sex toy. That story of Marvin being anxious about anal sex is actually based on a true story. And, you know, like I often do, I fictionalize these true stories I guess to explore them, to exploit them, I'm not sure. But the real story is very similar. I lived in Hartford, Connecticut after coming out in 1998, and I was out and about and would frequently go to the Metro Store. The Metro Store is a kind of gay store that I don't think exists anymore. It was almost like a gay general store. They had porn, lots of it, but they also had other items, clothing items, wind chimes, <laughs> food. It was a little bit of everything. And they had, you know, other stuff, like all kinds of stuff, everything you would need to be gay, basically. And I would routinely go in the Metro store and chat with the owner. But I had this uh, growing concern that uh, I was really disinterested in any anal sex. Now, I didn't have a boyfriend at the time, or I had some, but they didn't last very long. But we just never went there. And this was a big feature in my gay life ever since I was young. You know, 1920, when I was trying not to be gay, yet having lots of gay sex, we never went there. And I think in part, it was because of the AIDS crisis. I grew up, I came of age during the AIDS crisis. As a result, there are a lot of gay men like me who who are a little anxious about anal sex because of the spread of HIV, and there's this mental block. Whatever the reason, if it was religious, if it was psychological, I'm not sure, but it just was a challenge for me. But as I went to the Metro store, I would every now and then peruse the dildo aisle. There was, <laughs> there was a dildo aisle and there was also a rack that you can spin around with dildos. I, 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 you know, was getting tempted, I guess, or curious. And one day I decided to purchase a dildo. I purchased a bunch of other things. I know maybe to hide the purchase <laughs> and the t-shirt I bought and the wind chimes. But there it was. I bought this dildo that um, as I carried it to the counter, it just seemed to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It it didn't have a name, but I thought of it as Samson. That's the name that I gave it. Um, It was um, a dark green. No, no, that's not right. It was not. It was black. It was black. It was, um, yeah. You know, I actually can't remember what color it was. Um, In my mind, it's bright red, but I'm sure it wasn't. I go to the counter, put all my things there, and the shopkeeper's ringing them up, and he says, um, do you need lube to go with that? And I thought, I maybe do. I guess I should. So I did buy lube. I came home, unpacked everything, and uh, and there it was, this massive dildo. It was in a package, you know, it was like with the plastic around it and then cardboard around that was very hard to get out of its casing, actually, so I had to cut around it. Uh, and then I just, just stood it up there on the table, the kitchen table, and I I left it there because I really, 
I chickened out. <laughs> and I just sort of left it there for about a week. Fortunately, I did not have any guests come over. But there came a moment when I thought, you know, this is it. I'm going to do it. And I carried the dildo, which I, I swear was just kept getting bigger and bigger every time I looked at it. I uh, carried it into the bedroom and slathered it and me with lube. And seriously, I don't care what position I got into. That thing was going nowhere. It was like the gates to the kingdom were locked shut. And I just tried every possible angle and wedging it in and wiggling it in. And it was just going nowhere. And, and I was getting very anxious and and worried about this, that, that maybe I, um, in my heart of hearts, was not yet fully embracing being gay. Which, you know, I mean, really, is it, is it the anal sex that makes you a gay man? And I think that's the gist of what Dan Savage said to me, well, said to my character when I called in character. And, and when I called it, it, it really was a gag. But it also was my own backwards way of looking for answers. And welcome to the Homo Nomo Halfway House. My name is Chad, and I will be your tour guide. The Homo Nomo Halfway House is a Christian residential 12-step program that helps men, oh, and women too, we don't discriminate, overcome homosexuality and compulsive sexual behavior. It's an amazing program, and I thank God they took me in just in time. Now, before we begin our tour, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the program and how it operates. To assist me with that is one of our newest participants, Vlad. Hey, Vlad, we're ready for you. Mm -hmm. Vlad is from the former Soviet Republic of Ashker Bazaar. Ugh, I never say it right, but it is so exciting what the Lord has done, how he has torn down those horrible iron curtains. Ugh. And those people who for years lived under so much lies and oppression are now free to come to our country and be part of a program like this one. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Um, so here's Vlad. Vlad will tell you a little bit about the program and the rules, and I'll add my running commentary as I do. And don't be nervous, Vlad. They seem like a very friendly group. Hello, my name is Vlad. I have been in this Homo Nomo Halfway House for 27 days. Here in Homo Nomo Halfway House, we have five phases. We do 12 steps, and there are approximately 275 rules. Now I tell you about rules. Here in Homo Nomo Halfway House, we have many rules. The rules serve as boundaries. Now, to me, all of the rules, they are important, of course, but probably the most important rule of all is you must fuck us. Oh my gosh, what are you talking about? No, this is true. This is what you say. You must fuck us. You fuck us on the issues. You fuck us on the family. Uh, you fuck us. Oh my gosh, no. We pronounce that word focus. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, folks, but he's just learning English. Um, no, um, and you need to promise me that from now on, that's how you say it. It's focus. No, I, but this is what I said. Fuck us. Okay, now I tell you about the rules. While in Homo Nomo Halfway House, you must shave every day. This includes women too. Women, you must shave here, you must shave here, but you must not touch upside down triangle down there. Oh my gosh, ew, and disgusting, and mm, inappropriate, uh, and we'll talk about it later. And when we shave, we are forbidden to use any aftershave or cologne. There's a really important reason for that, the sense memory of smell. You see, somebody could be wearing the scent of a former sexual partner, and that could trigger me, just like that. Uh, so let me just say, for my safety and yours, could you please stay in the back of the tour if you're wearing Calvin Klein Obsession? Thanks. Here in Homo Nomo Halfway House, you cannot watch television, go to the movies, surf the internet, have mobile phone, or listen to music. Well, they do let us listen to contemporary Christian music. Praise the Lord. 
while in Homo no Mojafu House, you are forbidden to have sexual relations with anyone, including yourself. While in Homo no Mojafu House, you must report all FI behavior. FI stands for false image, because in our former lives as practicing homosexuals, we often hid behind the masks. Oh my gosh, that is so true. Like, take me for instance. Um, before I came into this program, I was so effeminate. Yeah, no, seriously. And they've done wonders on me. I think a lot of it has to do with the weekly football clinics. It's really butched me up. Mm. Well, there are tons more rules, and I'm sure they're going to pop up as we go through our tour. They often do. Oh, in fact, there's like a brand new rule. I haven't even told you about it yet, Vlad. Um, Actually, right now in the program, there is a participant. We're not supposed to know who he is, but I have my suspicions. He has been diagnosed with a PFF, a phallic fruit fetish. Mm -hmm. So as a result, yes, we have no bananas. <laughs> um, but, but no, seriously, he has a very serious case of it that actually extends into the vegetable world. So no phallic fruits or vegetables, including cucumbers, zucchinis, or carrots. Oh, except for those little mini carrots. They don't seem to bother him so much. Let me set the scene for you. I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, and I notice in the neighborhood I'm at, I'm seeing all these young men, very clean cut and fit, wearing uniforms, but like not like normal military uniforms, but like cadets, like West Point. Turns out I was just a few blocks away from the Citadel, a military college. It's got well over 2,000 cadets. And somebody told me, you should go. This week, they're having their monthly military parade. I was like, eh, okay. I sat in the stand with all these families and their children as flank after flank of these cadets came marching by with military precision. I mean, not a one was out of step. They looked identical until you looked closer. And then I noticed, oh, there were a few women, just a few, and a few people of color. And I wondered about other identities that get hidden and covered up. Uh, who are the people who, like, are the stoners who were sent because their father wanted to straighten them out? And what about the queer folks? South Carolina Corps of Cadets, Cadet Colonel Sarah Zorn from Aiken, South Carolina, Cadet Sergeant Major Eliza Melendez from Tampa, Florida. Bubble and Squeak is written and produced by me, Peter Santiscano. I mostly make this show for me and for fellow Rock Handy comrade Stephen Long. If you like what you heard of my ex-gay comedy, you can find the entire play on Amazon Prime. Just search for the film, Do in Time in the Homo Nomo Halfway House. The Bubble and Squeak theme song is Worthless by the Jelly Rocks from the Bang and Whimper album. You also heard two songs from Eleven D Seven, Hourglass from their Rad Science album, and Letterman Jacket from their brand new Basic Glitches album. You can find all this music on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to music. Feel free to say hi to me on Twitter at P2Sun, the letter P, the number 2, S-O-N, at P2Sun. And thanks for listening. For more shows like this one, visit rockcandyrecordings.com.
you know, in the 90s, I was gay and comfortable and very active. Then I got hooked up with the born-agains, and I went ex-gay. Long story. <laughs> 